Hey, you guys, and welcome to this episode of Web Trip. Uh, today, we are interviewing uh, Don Wong, which is the CEO of Unblocked. So, well, hi, Don Wong, and welcome to this episode of uh, Web Trip. Uh, thank you for being here today uh, with us. Um, could you please introduce yourself? My name is Dong Wan Shin. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO of One Block, Kmolin blockchain and software uh, software company. Before um, I started working uh, on One Block, I worked on um, various crypto projects such as cryptocurrency uh, exchanges and um, a sports related uh, blockchain platform called Chilis and um, some. Um, research companies as well. Before uh, I started working my career in crypto, I was a professional uh, starter player. Okay. At the end of my career, uh, I got to know about Bitcoin in 2016. And that's when um, I started my career in career in crypto. Uh, very nice. So 2016 before the 2017 uh, crave, you know, so you're early on. So if you had to, to explain your job, your current position at Onblock to a kid, like mm -hmm. like a six, eight years old, a smart one, though. How would you explain it? It's going to be really hard. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> I would probably explain that I'm working on a industry that is like really uh, quickly evolving and uh, expanding at the moment. The work that I do in this industry is going to improve your life in like 10 years later. Yeah, I would probably... Uh, not go like specifics of the industry because it's going to be like hard for kids to understand like the details. But yeah, I could just uh, explain like how the industry is uh, evolving quickly and it's going to like impact good in your like, later days. Yeah. What will it like improve in the later days? Like what specific point of his life, for instance? I would say uh, in terms of like currencies, for example, for now, um, we get used to like to use the national uh, national currencies, right? Mm -hmm. Like USD, Korean won, euros. But um, in 10 years, maybe 15 years, uh, it's going to completely uh, change it. Uh, it's going to be completely changed, I think. And uh, the use of uh, the cryptocurrencies on a daily basis will go really higher. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think uh, that will probably happen in like 10 years. It's already happening in some of the uh, com country countries as well. Yeah, yeah it's it's already happening, and you have also like some initiative, like government initiative with CBDCs and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this six years old will be sixteen when you know the world is like <laughs> is getting there. We have actually um, um, kind of an habit in this podcast, which is we ask the last interviewee to prepare a question for you. What inspired you to be in programming? What inspired you to create, right? If we're not talking uh, about programming, right? What inspired you to uh, like start to start on the journey that you, you're currently on? I guess um, I was uh, pretty pretty uh, competitive uh, when I was young. It was um, 13 years old that I decided to become a professional video game player. Mm -hmm. um, it was because there was a like this gaming trend in Korea where a lot of young people wanted to become like a professional video game player and um, I was like top two or three in my uh, school in my middle school and I always wanted to uh, be like this number one guy right mm -hmm. so I practiced a lot and uh, tried to uh, compete with him a lot and I eventually with him got uh, scouted to like a semi pro leagues that's how I uh, became a prof professional uh, video game player. I'm uh, very competitive uh, in terms of like competition and uh, always uh, passionate about uh, what I do. Yeah, I think that's still uh, that's still in me, even when I'm working for like the current company on Block and other projects. I always do wanna you know do more and do better than the others. Always like work hard. That kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah, that's still in me, I think. Yeah. So you, you're saying because um, you became a programmer because you have like this competitive side to you, 
But mm -hmm. when exactly did it translate from a um, uh, pro semi semi pro actually uh, video game player to I'm um, actually programming uh, for no and and for this community? Like when did it translate between this activity of video game to programming? It wasn't the programming that I translated uh, tra transition that first. Mm -hmm. It was Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, in 2016, when I was about uh, to retire from programming, I got to know about Bitcoin and the concept was really um, appealing. So I started why there was uh, this crypt cryptocurrency called Bitcoin and um, what what it can do and like what it's going to change uh, to the world. That kind of stuff really inspired me mm -hmm. to go into the crypto uh, industry. And in crypto industry, you kind of uh, have to understand like the te technical stuff uh, around the cryptocurrencies, right? That's how uh, I uh, started learning like programming in order to understand like the industry. That's a very, very interesting story, like not a common one. Like uh, I was into video game, then Bitcoin, and then I, I need to learn how, how the heck does it work, you know? So very cool. Thank you for, for sharing. And uh um, more precisely, and maybe more about today, could you present a project that you are currently working on and that you are passionate about? OnBlock's goal is to build uh, streamlined software for the for the users and developers for the Ganolan ecosystem, for the mm -hmm. Ganolan blockchain. We have three products. The first one is called uh, GnoSwap. It's it's an AMM DAX with the uh, concentrated uh, liquidity AMM. Mm -hmm. Similar to like Uniswap, the current Uniswap, we hope that uh, the Gnoswap can play a role of the liquidity layer for the Gnoland uh, ecosystem, so that a lot of um, other projects can use this liquidity as uh, as a source of their um, resources for their project. And uh, the second product is a non custodial wallet called Adena. Okay, Adena is. Um, Gnolan focused uh, non custodial wallet. You can already um, try at in, uh, download Adena and play with some some of the features that that uh, allow you to interact with the Gnolan blockchain. The last product is uh, called Gnoscan. It's a blog explorer for uh, the Gnolan blockchain ecosystem, so that you can um, check all the block and transaction and um, uh, tokens data in the Gnolan blockchain. Yeah, these three are our main products. Yeah, that's a, that's a very big suite already. And uh, uh, maybe what what was the most intellectually fulfilling in all of this project for you? Like, uh, uh, could you maybe describe a moment where you're like, "Oh, I'm really liking what I'm doing." I think it's the Dex and the wallet because it requires a lot of uh, user interactions. Yes. And uh, the area that I'm most interested in Web three is the intersection between Web two and Web three. Right. Mm -hmm. So for just Web2 users, they're not used to knowing this kind of like mnemonic private key or like having non custodial stuff like that. So I've always wanted to like narrow this gap, uh, like lower the hurdles for the Web2 users so that they can just seamlessly use the Web3 products. That's uh, what I'm most interested in. And uh, while um, I'm working on Gnosub and Adina wallet. We are trying our best to like make these uh, user interactions seamlessly for the web, even even for the web users. So, for example, uh, for 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 the wallet Adina, uh, you can actually log in with your Google account oh, with uh, okay. the with the Adina wallet. So you you don't have to know like seed threads or uh, private keys stuff like that. But there still needs to be ways of using like mnemonics and private keys, right? We're trying our best to like um, satisfy these two types of users, like user convenience and security. Yeah, these two are really uh, interesting to work on. Yeah, it is. It is actually. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of people making fun of like web free companies actually making web 2.5. But um, I think what in what you're saying, it's actually a very different. It's actually, I want to onboard user for Web2 to actually join this Web3 ecosystem. And um, I think that's a you know, very fulfilling 
also a very complicated task. I'm really looking forward to see how it's going to turn out for Agina and uh, a very cool project. I mean, we've been talking already a lot about the web free space and like the potential, for instance, for probably six years old, how it's going to impact his life in the next 10 years. But um, when you're thinking about web free, uh, what do you imagine in the next upcoming years? Like, uh, do you have any like utopian future or dystopian vision that you would like to share? I think the uh, the main question we have to ask, we have to answer to you is uh, why there needs to be a blockchain. Why uh, just general people have to use this decentralized application on a daily basis? Yeah, yeah I think I've been working past eight years to have like clear answers to these two questions, but I haven't actually uh, found it yet. Uh, found a you know clear answer to this yet. For example, like if we use this like websites, mm -hmm. we don't have to know like which language these websites were written from, right? It, it should be the same for uh, blockchain. I think it has to be integrated in like um, daily use applications uh, seamlessly. So even if they don't know which blockchain it's integrated, they just use it because it's essential. It's, it's an essential tool for their um, daily life, right? It's, yeah. it's kind of the goal of every infrastructure at the end of the day, because um, most of the infrastructure that you are using, that we are all using in the web today, we don't even think about them. We don't even think about the CIP uh, on a daily basis when I'm sending you an email. You know, it's not like, oh, <laughs> this is how it's going on. Right. And probably, like, I'm pretty sure about, like, in, that in the next few years, like, the attention that we give to what type of blockchain, what type of protocol will be less reduced. I mean, more reduced, actually. So it's it's the goal of it, like being an infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. So that, so to you in the future, what you're seeing is this really becoming again an infrastructure, if I understand it well. Yeah, and uh, once we uh, we can answer to these questions, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a utopia for the industry, right? Once we can't uh, find like good answers for these two, I think um, it's gonna it's gonna be harder for the industry. To be like to go like me to to go to the mainstream. I'm working to find these answers. Very nice. And do you have any like? Uh, are you afraid of anything? Basically, like in the space, like uh, is there anything that comes to mind for you, which will be like the dystopian road that web free space will take? I think the uh, regulatory issues are uh, the main concern to me. Like for example, uh, SEC, the SEC. I think I heard that uh, they are looking into. The uh, Ethereum Foundation, if to to see that um, it is a security secure or not, they recently like uh, sent a wealth notice to uh, the Uniswap Labs. Like this kind of uh, movements were uh, are kind of a uh, concern to me mm -hmm. because um, it involves like uh, some pol political actions as well. Yeah, we are uh, in the situation where. Uh, they cannot like shut down the industry, but they cannot find like these certain rules for the industry. The industry moves uh, based on their actions right now. So it's kind of, you know, uh, blockchain yeah. based on their actions and it's not good for the industry, industry I think. Yeah, I, I hope that um, they uh, set like certain regulatory rules for the industry so that like companies for us can to move on, you know? Yes, of course. And uh, at one block and uh, with the GNO Foundation as well, like, do, do you try to initiate any, any type of dialogue with, um, you know, this institution? Like, uh, um, are you trying to have like this collaborative basis so the industry can advance? Yeah, we are uh, constantly getting like legal opinions on what we do mm -hmm. uh, to like, uh, to be aligned with the law, right? Uh, we are based in South Korea. If there are any chances that uh, we can uh, talk to like regulators or any partners who are interested in like uh, regulations on crypto, yeah, we always do. Okay. And uh, it, yeah, it is something that uh, all the individuals and companies uh, should do in order to advance the law of uh, this crypto industry to the next level. Yeah. 
Yeah, but and uh, I know that, um, uh, for instance, uh, some governments are more or less open to discuss. And uh, Taiwan has uh, this system of sandbox, which is like very useful for the crypto industry and like uh, uh, also other application related to art. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's very important for you know most companies to actually join and gather as union. Uh, you have association like the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Application, uh, which I was a part of, which you know, jobs is actually to organize this kind of like organized efforts to actually talk to the regulator and like find a way to move forwards. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know what, that's interesting because uh, I'm, I will not have phrased it as a dystopia, but it could actually turn to a roadblock at one point and to be a dystopia. So thank you for, for this. Um, I think a question that we could ask ourselves today, and uh, I mean, you've been having like a very prolific and like diverse career uh, so far, will be like, what advice would you give to uh, the youth uh, for the upcoming years? Like maybe someone watching this podcast and wanting to join the industry or what advice would you give? I think um, make like bold decisions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think the... Um, I don't know if it's just, it's, it's just me, but uh, these Gen Z generations, they like to enjoy their uh, YOLO life, you, you know? It's kind of a culture mm -hmm. where uh, they uh, spend, like, all of their savings. They just live for, like, you only live today, right? It, it's, it's kind of sad that um, I feel like the countries kind of force them to live like that. I just hope that um, they challenge to their boundaries more and make bold decisions and like uh, even if they fail they will have another chance because you know they are, they are young and there are like many resources that you can have to learn something from the internet and become uh, like a impactful uh, person right so be bold and 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 dare to to fail uh, that's uh, that's a beautiful advice for for young listener we have this wildcard system where you ask a question for the next interviewee. So I'm not going to give you the identity of the next one, but if you have a question for our next interviewee, what will it be? What's the thing that keeps you up at night? And what's the thing that makes you excited when you wake up? Nice. Is there anything you want to add uh, about no, about one blog, about the project you're working on? I think uh, I hope that uh, you know it's gonna be like a gateway for web two developers when they uh, come to the web three industry because it's it's a really developer uh, friendly uh, blockchain protocol where you can just write your smart contract and deploy it with with the GNOME VM without having to like learn like a blockchain specific language. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a good tool for you to try uh, if you're interested in Web3. I hope uh, you get to use some some, some of our uh, infrastructure uh, products as well. Super cool. Yeah. Very nice. So thank you so much for joining today for this episode and uh, looking forward to your more, but you know, in the future uh, and to check the news about the project. Yeah.